Hey everyone. So uh, this lesson is how to do lines 11 through 14 in our Essential Elements book. And there's a couple of things that are new here that we have to worry about musically. The good news is that you have learned all of the notes that you need to play everything for the next several pages in the book. That is as long as you've already watched the videos that I shared on our first notes for your instrument. If you play the trumpet or the clarinet, the notes that you know how to play now are C, D, E, F, and G. If you play uh, the flute or the trombone or the tuba or a percussion instrument, the notes that you know are B flat, C, D, E flat, and F. Those five notes are going to take us a long way. Now, if you have not yet watched the Our First Notes video, what are you doing? Go back and watch that because you really need to watch those videos before you move on. If you haven't watched those videos, you're going to have knowledge gaps that are going to be hard to fill in just going forward through the other lessons. All right, let's take a look at the page. This is a trumpet book that I have in front of me here. And we can see uh, from this yellow box that there's new information that the composers are trying to share with us. Whenever we have a shaded box, it always means, some, means that something is new. Now in this case, uh, for the trumpets, the clarinets, and the flutes, and the percussion, one of the new things we have to learn is a treble clef. Now, um, everything you've read so far in our book has been uh, a treble clef. They just didn't have the clef written down. And the clef is sort of like uh, a symbol at the beginning that labels the, the vertical axis of a graph. Uh, so you'll see every piece from here on out will begin with a treble clef. If you play a trombone or tuba, then up here in the yellow box, you're learning about a bass clef or an F clef. I've already shown you this in the video about how to, uh, to name notes, and uh, you've practiced reading notes using the musictheory.net exercises that I gave you. And again, if you haven't watched those videos, go back and watch them because you really do need to know how to figure out the letter names. In this area in your book, they show a whole row of letter names uh, for notes, and those are the lines and spaces of the staff and, and how they're all always labeled. Uh, you know, on trumpet, these first five notes here. If you play uh, flute or percussion, the five notes that you know are up there, only you know how to play a B flat and an E flat, not just merely those letters. Again, make sure that you you understand how to read the, the note names, and if you don't, go back and watch the video about that. Another new thing that you're gonna, you're gonna start seeing in your book right now is time signatures. Now, right now, the time signature is always gonna be four, four. That is, there are four beats in each measure, and this bottom four stands for one quarter. A quarter note gets the beat. So there are four quarter notes in each measure, which has been true all along. All of these other lines, lines one through 10, were all really in four, four time. They just hadn't yet shown you what a time signature is. Finally, we need to be aware of sharp, flat, and natural signs. There's another lesson this week about sharp, flat, and natural notes and how to find them on a piano keyboard. Uh, basically, if you just see a letter, that note is natural. C and C natural, same thing. F and F natural, same thing. And then flat and sharp are modifiers we can put in front of notes. So a note that is sharp would be slightly higher than. F sharp is higher than F, for example. Flat means slightly lower than, so B flat is lower than B. Now we don't need to be too stressed about these things, but these symbols uh, are important, uh, and you're, later on you'll have trouble reading the music if you don't understand what these symbols all mean. All right, now let's take a look at line 11, and I want you to take a moment to compare line 11 and line 10 and see if you can see how they are the same and how they are different. Now, if you said, well, they sound exactly the same, you are correct. Both of them are the exact same music. The difference is in the presentation. So here they've added a treble clef and they've added a time signature, or they might've added a bass clef if you play a bass clef instrument. Um, and they've taken away the letters that were inside the notes. But remember, a C, this is for the trumpets and clarinets, a C is this note that has a ledger line through it that's below the staff. 
it's not because it has the letter C, it's because of where it is in the staff. And here, these notes, they're all C's, the same as those. This D is hanging below the staff, so is this one. These G's are in the second line of the staff, just like these. So they've taken away that crutch. Um, what I recommend you do, uh, now that we're seeing, we're gonna see more and more songs that don't have the letters in them, is before you play, take the time to name the notes in your head. Don't write them down, just name them in your head, and then you can go back and play them. Now, looking at your book in line 11, if you play trumpet or clarinet, line 11 says C, 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 D, rest, 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 G, G, F, F, E, rest, 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 and repeat. If you play trombone, tuba, or percussion, or flute, B flat, B flat, B flat, B flat, D, rest, 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 G, G, F, F, E flat. Now, we can play that together right now if you'd like, but you've already played it in line 10. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> And it's just like what we played earlier in line 10. Now, again, the rest of these lines that we're gonna play today are all about learning how to read the notes without the crutch of the letters in the middle of them. So take a moment to look through line 12 and name the notes that you see in line 12. So I'll name the notes now in line 12. First for the flutes and the trombones and the tuba and the percussion. And then I'll name it for the trumpets and clarinets. So for that first group of instruments, the notes in 12 are D, D, C, C, B flat, B flat, B flat, F, F, E flat, E flat, D, C, B flat. And if I play a trumpet or a clarinet, those notes are E, E, D, D, C, 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 G, G, F, F, E, D, C. Now before I play it, I wanna just give a, some advice to the flute players. Flutes, you guys have to do some gymnastics with your fingers. You guys have to do some gymnastics with your fingers uh, to play this because you're, you're going uh, from notes that use a lot of fingers to notes that use very few fingers. So if I were you, what I would do is I would practice playing a D and then a C, learning what fingers move to get from one to the other. So D, D, think and move, C, C, think and move, B flat, B flat, B flat, and these next ones are fairly easy for you guys, F, F, E flat, E flat, here your fingers have to move the most, D, C, B flat. So that D to C transition is one you're gonna to wanna to practice a lot, going as slow as you need to move to get your fingers to do what they need to do. Let's play now line number 12, first flight. Hopefully you've already practiced your fingers doing what they need to do. One, two, one, two, Three, four. All right, now line number 13, it says here is the essential elements quiz, what they're quizzing you on is whether or not you can name the notes. So you see that they've labeled the first three notes for you. In my case, I play the trumpet, so it says C, D, E. On your instrument, it might say B flat, C, D. Um, I want you to take the time right now to write them all in in this line and this line only. We don't want to be in the, in the habit of writing in note names, but it's good that we know how to name the notes and that's what they're testing you on here is whether you can name the notes. 
I'm not going to tell you the answers to this one. Uh, I will want to, to see you share with me uh, the letter names. We'll do that in the live chat in class. But I'm going to turn on that metronome and uh, I'm going to play it for you right now. I want you to play along with me after you've had a chance to name the notes. Here I go. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> If I'm going too fast for you here, of course, you can go back and play this as many times as you need to. You can practice it independently, you know, by yourself where you can pause or slow down as much as you need to. Um, and I'm going to post line number 14 on Music First Classroom so you can play it with practice first and you can control the tempo so you can set it to play it at a slower tempo than the one I've got marked. Right now I'm playing at 105. You might find it easier to play at 90 or 85. All right, so looking back in the book, at the top of page six, here's the, the lesson that I want you to, the target that I want you to reach this week, and that is being able to play Rolling Along. You might also know this as Mary Had a Little Lamb. It's the same tune, they just decided to call it Rolling Along. At the top of the page in the yellow shaded box, they show us the names and fingerings for all the notes that we already know how to play for the trumpet and clarinet. G, F, E, D, C, and for the percussion, uh, trombone and tuba, F, E flat, D, C, B flat, and they have right there in the diagrams the fingerings that we need to play those notes. I'm going to do merrily we roll along, rolling along uh, for you. I want you to practice naming the notes on your own first and then practice playing it with me and if it's too fast go to practice first and practice at the tempo that you need to go here we go merrily we roll along or rolling along line number 14. one two one two three four <laughs> And I should point out to you also that um, in this tune, it is two lines long. So you can see at the end of the first line, it says, go to the next line. And then at the end of the second line, we have a double bar signaling this is the end. If you ever get to the end of a line and see a single bar line, that usually means, or that nearly always means, there's more music yet to come and you'll go to the beginning of the next line. Uh, this is the first time we've seen a song that's two lines long, but it's not the last. You will in the future see music where the song lasts an, ent an entire page. So every time you get to the end of the line, you go to the beginning of the next line, just like, like you were reading text in a book. And when we get to the very bottom of the page, it says, says the end in the form of a double bar line. That's it for this lesson. Thanks for stopping by.